Hello, all. Welcome to your short session for reducing anxiety. So let's start out by just checking in. <clears throat> that is one of the most important things when it comes to stressing is just really making sure that we're checking in with ourselves, especially with anxiety. Just noticing where you're at is number one. If you don't know that you're stressed or you're anxious, you can't really move out of that. Sorry for any background noise here. There's a big festival going on in Cusco, Peru right now. So checking in with yourself. Let's check in on a scale of one to 10. Where are you as far as anxiety? 10 being super anxious, one being not very anxious at all. And if you're very high on that scale, what we really want to do is try and tap that number down with emotional freedom technique, which is basically a Qigong technique. And then we'll do some yoga poses to really relax and also some yoga breath work. So with that, let's get started. Checking in with yourself, just noticing, not judging where you're at. Taking a deep inhale as you notice. Relaxing the shoulders down the back, feeling heavy through the bottom, letting the air out through the mouth or the nose. Taking a deep breath in. And exhale out. One more. It's nice to start a session with three breaths. Inhale. And exhale out. Always starting with three breaths just to transition yourself into this new space. So now that we've got our anxiety level or stress level, right? It doesn't have to be anxiety. Maybe you're just stressed. Let's try and work with that. Okay. So breathing two to one exhales to inhales really helps with anxiety. I talk about this a lot because it's so important, right? And then holding that air out for just a second or a little bit longer trains our nervous system to relax. So with that, let's get started. We're going to do about a minute of these and then we'll move into some yoga. Inhaling for two to four or for six. Inhale. And exhale. You can breathe out through your mouth. You do not have to breathe out through your nose, but try and breathe in through your nose if possible. Inhale. And don't rush the breath. Just take it in slow. Exhale. Out. And pause for a second at the bottom. Inhale. Slow. Don't rush the breath. Don't get those shoulders going. Keep those guys relaxed and exhale out. Inhale slow. Keep those shoulders on your back. You can actually use this hand position if you like. This is a Qigong pose. I'm just cueing with the breath. Exhale out. You might even be able to sense some energy around your body. Inhale. The cool thing about yoga and Qigong is that you get to tune into your body. You get to sense what's going on. Exhale out. And with anxiety or stress, a lot of it lives in our body. So we just really need to move that out. Inhale, slow. Last one. Exhale out. Great. So now from here, we're going to move into some yoga and we'll be adding that breath on. Okay, so check in with yourself quick. Scale one to 10, how are you feeling anxiety or stress level? Has it come down at all? Maybe not, but the key is to keep checking in with that as we do this and see what works for you. Are some of these poses working? This is all designed, I have many years in yoga, designed to really try and relax your nervous system, especially with the breath work and all of these different things. So from here, you're gonna lengthen the spine, get tall, but you're still heavy through your bottom. So try not to pop the ribs. Like you don't want to raise the rib cage up. You want to keep this kind of down and back. Not trying to force it, but heavy through the bottom. Lengthen through the top of the spine with that heavy bottom. And then we're just going to twist. But the twist will be that six seconds or four seconds out. Okay. Inhale. For three or two. And then exhale for six. Slow movements. Try and twist. Now twist with your head too if that's possible. Don't force it. Try and feel your left butt bone if possible. Exhale out. Inhale back to center slowly. Just let the body uncoil naturally. Try not to rip it. Try not to rip into it. Exhale to twist. Feel that left butt bone again. Exhale twist. Inhale 
inhale back to center. We're just going to do about three of these each side, okay? Inhale and exhale to twist. Inhale back to center. Keeping that chin slightly tucked, not forcing it though. Exhale, twist. I never want to force anything with yoga or qigong or fitness. Inhale back to center. If we force things, something down our chain, our kinetic chain, our bones, exhale, twist, has to give, it has to take that pressure, that extra force that we force our body to do. Inhale back to center. Last one, exhale, twist. You can put your hands on your legs. You can't really see it on all the screens here, but I'm grabbing the outside edge of my leg without ripping it, just slow. Inhale back to center. Okay. So now we're going to move into forward folds, and you can do this two ways, okay? We're going to do this for about two minutes. So you can either pull your knee into your chest, and that will be the six-second exhale. Inhale to slowly lower. And then we'll switch legs, okay? And you can do this, or you can simply fold forward. Whichever one feels good, we're both going inward. Whenever we go forward, whenever we stretch the back body, we get this nice calming sensation, okay? We got kidneys, we have liver uh, meridians running up the back of our body. So very calming. So let's get started. We're going to use that breath again, okay? Six seconds or four seconds out. If you can't do the whole six, that's fine, okay? Inhale. And exhale, fold, or bring your knee into your chest, okay? Slowly folding. Support that neck. You can use your thumbs if you want to to support your neck. Inhale, back up, slow. And don't rush the breath. Keep it relaxed. Exhale out. Inhale, back up. You might be able to hear the background here. I've got some... Peruvian Incan festivities going on. It's pretty wild. It's cool to hear the flutes. Exhale out. Inhale back up. You can use your hands to kind of push yourself back up. And if you do, keep the elbows in towards your body and you can kind of feel the outside edge of your hand. Okay. Inhale slow. And then exhale out. Just take your time. You might even check in with yourself right now with your anxiety level or your stress level. Where are you at on that scale of 1 to 10? Is it coming down? If not, just don't judge it. And believe me, by the end of this session, you will feel different. A lot of this has been brought to us by some of the greatest sages and yogis of the whole world. These great classical breathwork examples, exhaling out, and these postures which are based on thousands of years of people studying the mind, the body. All right. All right. So just lengthening through that spine, getting tall. And we're just going to notice for a moment, okay? So try and see if you notice any areas in your body that you might feel a little bit more stressed. Maybe it's the shoulders. Maybe it's the low back. Maybe it's another spot. Just check in with that. And let's see if we can just Ask that spot to relax a little bit and see if throughout our practice we can cue into that and try and see if we can release it and just being aware of it and seeing the mind-body connection. Just noticing that spot for a moment. You can close your eyes if you like, if that helps you. If not, keep them open. Find a spot to focus on. All right. So moving into Qigong massage, and I trickily like to sneak in emotional freedom technique because it's basically Qigong. And we'll do some other areas too. We'll do the ears, um, we'll do the hands, and really just go through this full chi cycle, this full prana energy cycle, of getting our whole body system rebalanced through this tapping, okay? And we'll also do a quick little check-in here, okay? So scale one to 10, where are you at on as far as anxiety or stress? Okay, 10 being super stressed, super anxious, one being not at all. Check in, okay? And tapping this point really lightly, or you can go a little bit harder. I like to really stimulate the energy channels of the body. 
Okay, this is karate chop point. This is heart, um, small intestine, a lot of different things. And really, if you keep the fingers together super tight and you tap really kind of at the same angle, you're stimulating all the different energy channels through your fingers because you kind of get that full vibration through there. And that's why we tap on the face too, because that gets the whole um, kind of energy channel system through the face balance too. It resonates. Okay. So check in. And then from here, we're just going to say, even though I feel stress and really feel this, even though I feel stress, that's okay. I accept myself. I love myself. And we'll do that another two times and we'll go through the points. Even though I feel stressed or anxious, that's okay. I accept myself. I love myself. One more and really feel that. Try and feel that. Think about yourself in your best light where you really, can really love yourself, okay? Inhale. Even though I'm stressed or anxious, I deeply accept the stress and I love myself. I accept myself. Okay. All right, moving on. So this point right here, you can rub this point, which is yin tong point. You can also tap here. And I recommend um, trying either. If you feel anxious and tapping makes you anxious, try rubbing. Okay, try rubbing. Because tapping for some people, like my girlfriend just hates it. She, she won't even do any tapping. So you can massage, okay, or tap just right here inside the eyebrows. Stress, anxiety. Okay. Moving down to the sides of the eyes, that bony structure there. Okay. And tapping that. Stress, anxiety. Okay. We use seed phrases here on these other points just to bring something up. And you can create something else for you. So imagine a time where you feel stressed, right? Stress, anxiety. And we're tapping these points to try and get that to release. So we're feeling it, but we're balancing our nervous system. So moving down to the bottom of the eyes here. And with this one, you can actually kind of uh, see, feel the bones here. And then there's like a little hole and you'll feel it. It'll feel a little bit nervy when you rub on it. And again, you can rub this point. You don't have to tap it. Tapping this point, there's no specific way to do it. I like to do this. This is a a mudra in yoga and you can kind of tap. I like to imagine energy flowing from my fingertips, like in this mudra out through the fingers and revitalizing my system. So something you can kind of play around with. Inhale. Stress, anxiety, and really feel that stress, anxiety. Imagine a situation that just stresses you out and we're just tapping it out of your system. Okay, moving down to the nose. And we're gonna do a few breaths here. You can tap this point too. I want you to breathe one to one now. We've been breathing out for six. I didn't really cue that here, but just one to one ratio, okay? So this is this line here, this China, uh, Chinese energy meridian runs all the way down the back and up under the genitalia. Um, so inhale for three. Exhale, feel your bottom nice and heavy. Relax the shoulders, lengthen through your neck. Don't rush the breath in. Try and see if you can smooth it out a little bit. Inhale. And exhale out. You can breathe out through your mouth, but I always recommend breathing in through the nose. It's a lot more balancing in the ancient scriptures, at least in uh, Chinese, or sorry, Indian yoga, always talk about breathing in through the nose. Inhale. And exhale. Under the chin here. Now this point here runs down the front body. So it balances the reproductive system here, okay? So just kind of rub this point here. You'll feel it, believe me, it's right beneath that chin there, okay? And breathing in for three. You can notice that stressful event or a stressful image. We're moving this energy out, okay? That's what's so great about EFT is you can work on so many scenarios while actually doing something, right? It's like, you know, people who smoke cigarettes, right? They're standing in a group. They need something to do with their fingers, right? 
EFT is like something to do, like move while you're working on stuff. So grab a notebook when you go through EFT or after this session, just write down what came up. Maybe something doesn't, but that's okay. You know? Exhale out. All right. This is where we really reset everything. So if you've been with us from the beginning, scale one to 10, one being not stressed at all, 10 being super stressed, where are you? And just checking back in here. And this is where we create a new reality. So feel this kind of tender area here, okay? You wanna feel that area. And then we wanna try and tap with the fingers. And I like to hit the collarbone here, this kind of thing here, and then the sternum at the same time, okay? If you don't like that, that's fine. You can just kind of rub this area or kind of tap this area, it's not gonna really affect anything, okay? Inhale. Imagine a time where you felt super good, right? Where you weren't anxious or stressed. Maybe you overcame something. Inhale. Exhale out. Where was that? What were you doing? Who were you with? Imagine those people, that supportive place, for me, it's a beach. I have this beach in Costa Rica in my mind where I'd been practicing a lot of EFT and I was tapping that sunset into my skull, into my brain. I wanna be in places like this more, right? I'm a digital nomad and I've been creating my business online. I want to be there. I'm happiest there with my girlfriend, breathing, watching the sunset, right? Create your vivid imagery as much as you can. It's key. Right? That's what's so great about EFT. Create that imagery. Reset that anxiety. Tap it out. Inhale. Exhale out. One more. Inhale. Nice work, guys. Exhale out. All right. I want you to remember this image. We're not done yet. I want you to remember this image whenever you're doing EFT for a while and try and really work on that. Try and move away from anxiety and into this new mental image that you've created, okay? We've got one more point. This one's kind of fun. It's the very top of your head, so the very crown of the head, just tapping that point, okay? And this is kind of just the last point to just get stuff out of your body that might still be there. So it's just a nice kind of, you can also rub it too. Like if you don't like to tap, you don't like to boop, you can just kind of rub that point it's the it'll feel a little tender there and just tap in that okay three breaths in and out inhale exhale out i forgot to tell you too you can also always just do this with one finger i just do both sides to get that done so whenever you're watching an eft video you can just watch and then tap with one hand which is kind of cool so don't ever feel like you have to tap with both sides inhale Exhale out. All right, guys. So we're still not done. We're going to move into more Qigong massage. That's the emotional freedom technique, which I just classify as Qigong. We're just rubbing and pulling on the ears, okay? So it doesn't really matter. That's what's so cool about um, Qigong massage. Normally, after we do a Qigong uh, uh, exercise, it's like, you know, the breathing. I don't know if you like this, right? At the end of a session, at the end of a session, we always try and harvest energy and move it into these essential points. The ears are one of those. So in the Chinese school of thought and traditional Chinese medicine, they believe that the ears mirror are a microcosm of the rest of the body. So you can actually rub here too and kind of pull on those guys. You can pull. It's so nice because Qigong massage at the end of Qigong and a Qigong practice or yoga practice or fitness, you can add this in. <clears throat> it's like freestyle massage and you get to balance your nervous system, right? The Chinese have been experimenting with, with this for thousands of years, right? So massaging those ears balances out the whole body and pulling on those ears. And again, you wanna rub until you get warm. So just really rub until you start to get warm. That's the key to know when you're done. When, you're, when you get those ears nice and warm, you are all done and you can move on to the next point, okay? All right. How are we doing, guys? Thanks for being here. I'm Michael from Breathbase. Thank you so much for the support. Please like or follow if you dig it. All right, so moving on here, we're just gonna massage the hands. So 
in traditional Chinese medicine, this area here is said to be where the qi can flow out of. It's said to actually flow in through this point right here, and you can kind of send the energy, right? You've seen martial artists and doing the, the block chops and stuff, right? So we want to really try and massage this point right here. So right in the center, massaging that point, okay? Breathing in for one to one ratio. And check in with yourself, scale one to 10, where are you at? On anxiety level or stress level, 10, super stress, one, not at all. Let's try and move that number down. We've got a couple more massage techniques, maybe one or two more yoga poses that we'll do, all seated, super nice to do. Tell your grandma. <laughs> All right, so moving over to that other hand here. Inhale. And exhale out. Inhale. Exhale out. Now we're going to go through each individual finger. So it doesn't matter which side you start on, but we're just going to kind of pull and play around with massaging each individual finger for about 10 seconds. Okay, if you're feeling stressed, this is really good too. Moving over to this finger here, and then center finger. There's no right or wrong way to do this, but typically, again, you wanna work until your fingers get um, really warm, if possible, right? That, will, that means that the energy or the chi, the prana, whatever you wanna call it, uh, is flowing there. So moving over to the index finger here, and then over to the thumb, and we'll finish this one hand. All right, now moving over to the other hand, you can do a quick little hand rub in between and then starting on that pinky. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. This is actually kind of a cool technique. You can go like this and pull down and then you can kind of change the angle from the side and pull down. Um, but just for massaging that pinky for a second and then ring finger. Sí, hablo español poco. <laughs> okay, en el centro, in the center, middle finger. Los dedos, todos los dedos. Okay, middle uh, pinky, or sorry, index finger, I'm trying to speak Spanish and English. Un masaje por los dedos es muy importante. This is very important for uh, la energía de todo el cuerpo, for the whole body, and that thumb. Okay, guys? Yeah, I'm in, uh, estoy en Cusco. I'm in Peru, in Cusco, Peru, ahora, now, con mi novia, con my girl, with my girlfriend. All right, now rubbing those hands. We're gonna sense, we're gonna play around with this for a second. I know this can get a little bit odd. You're just gonna go like this, bring your hands apart. Inhale, and then exhale. See if you notice anything between the hands. Something, maybe a tingling, maybe, a, it doesn't matter what it is. Whatever it is to you, inhale. And exhale. Try and feel what's between the hands. Right? People talk about space as not, nothing, no thing, but there might be something there. Something within the nothing, and nothing within the something. It's possible, you know? Last one, exhale. Just sensing chi, sensing prana, energy, whatever you want to call it. And then putting the hands uh, on the heart and just Noticing, right, we just spent a lot of time balancing our hands, working with the ears, which are very, very vital, okay? Take a deep breath in and exhale out. Feel the rib cage come down underneath the hands. You might even feel the back of your chair if you're sitting down. Inhale. And exhale out one more. Inhale, we're going to move into yoga after this. And exhale. Okay, guys. So we've done forward folds, if you've been here for a while, which is basically just going forward. We've done some twists, 
Okay, and now we're just gonna do some really, really basic kind of stretches, okay? In India, a lot of the times, so exhale, going around, and you don't have to breathe with this one, try and really isolate the wrists. I don't know about you guys, but I spend a lot of time on my computer, um, especially trying to build this brand and really try and get the message out about yoga fusion with yoga, qigong, and fitness together. And uh, my wrist, right, from holding the phone, uh, the iPhone 13, it's huge and just kind of hurts the wrist. Now reversing direction. So the, the Indians do this before practice, right? They warm up the joints first. So always warming up the joints before starting practice and doing like this, okay? And inhale, exhale. Try and really go as far forward as you can. This is super good for wrists. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. And actually, this mudra right here, inhale like this, is a super powerful mudra, right? It means stop. You see people use that. You ever don't want something in your life, you ever want to tell people no, just put your hand up. Super powerful. Inhale, last one. And exhale out. All right. So now we're going to try and uh, work with the shoulders, or sorry, the wrists, or the elbows. Oh my gosh. So you're just going to roll the elbow. Okay. We're going one way. You don't need to breathe with this one, but really try and isolate. So try not to move the shoulder at all. Just isolate and try and make a nice little circle. Okay. Just doing six per side. You can add breath work into this. One to one is just really nice. That way you don't have to worry about matching the breath with anything. Um, reversing. Oftentimes we want to match the breath with things. This one, since we're just trying to kind of get it in, um, just a quick like, and just balancing the breath that way is fine. And then switching sides, okay? It doesn't matter which way you start with necessarily. And really trying to isolate and just see if you notice a difference between the joint range of motion. And that can just sometimes tell us something about what's going on with the body, right? And I highly recommend um, getting assessed by a physical therapist if you have any joint pain or just have a significant difference in range of motion. Uh, po the Postural Restoration Institute is amazing, absolutely amazing. And I highly recommend working with their people. I'm not one of them, um, but I worked with one and I've worked with one since I was probably 20 years old because I've had severe back pain. And actually a lot of my issues I think stem have stemmed from um, like just structural issues, like anxiety, stuff like that. It actually just puts a lot of stress on your body, right? Stress on your joints. So physiologically, if your body's stressed, your mind will probably be stressed and vice versa. If the mind is stressed, the body can get stressed. All right. So now shoulders. And this one's just going to be really simple. We're not going to do anything here. I just want you to raise up and then exhale, roll them down your back. And try not to rush, rush the breath too much. Slow inhale, especially with this because we can train these auxiliary muscles. We can breathe with, watch me quick, these muscles right here, okay? Exhale down. So we don't want to rush the breath. Inhale up here, especially. Exhale down. Inhale, just two more. Exhale down. And when you roll the shoulder blades down the back, try and feel in between those shoulder blades. Those muscles help us walk. Inhale. They help us rotate. All the rotation happens kind of right in between where you might be feeling those muscles work. Inhale up. Exhale down. All right. So this next part is one of my favorites. We're going to be stretching the neck, okay? This three-way neck stretch, if you don't do any yoga, any qigong or anything, you don't make time for anything, these three stretches are the best stretches ever, okay? So put your hands on your upper, upper chest here. Feel your butt bones, okay? It's really important that we don't pop our chest. Feel the butt bones, shoulder blades are relaxed, and I actually like to do this just because it kind of gives me the kind of rotation, this external rotation that I want. 
And exhaling, look up, feel your butt bones, feel the back of your chair. If you're sitting in a chair, you can do this standing too. Inhale, back down, one to one ratio. Exhale up. Feel that stretch, feel the rib cage come down. Inhale, back down. In yoga, it's often taught the reverse, but the reason why we're doing it like this, exhale, is to calm down, right? This is an anti-anxiety, stress-less class. So we can get our structure butt back in place as we exhale, inhale, back down. We can bring this down, okay? Exhale up. You can feel the rib cage coming down as you exhale up. You might even feel like a stretch through your chest. Just honor your body, don't force it. If you feel really tight, last one, exhale up. Inhale back down. You don't want to hold those stretches for very long because a lot of these muscles, some on the side here, like this guy here, sternocleomastoid is really big, but we've got a ton of these small muscles here, the scalenes that attach up to C1 through C5. So we don't want to hold these for a super long time. Just be very gentle, okay? So the next one I like to call the waiter. You put your hands up and you're just gonna tilt your neck to the side. Now, if you have a tight neck to begin with, just keep your hands down by your side and you can do this, okay? So this one though, you might feel a little bit more nerve stretch, which is really nice. You can really feel super nice. Exhale to the side, inhale back to center. Inhale, exhale back to the side. Do I see Atitlan herbals there? I've got three cameras. Hello? We've got three cameras in there blocking. Some of them are blocking the view here. And then back to center and then exhale. One more each side, inhale, center. Exhale to the side. Inhale, center. Exhale to the side. All right. So this next one, I want you to get up if you can. You can stay seated for this too, but this one's just really nice. And this is how we'll end our practice and how I like to end all of my Qigong practices. Um, so you are just going to stand here and all you're going to do, let's see, I can't see my feet here on this screen. I got three screens there. Uh-oh, show on the other screen. All right. Uh, there. So what you're going to do is you are going to twist. Okay, so exhale the twist and watch my feet. See this? I want you to go to the outside edge of your feet. This is really good for your bladders, okay? Exhale the twist and look over your shoulder. Get those eyes involved. A lot of times with anxiety and stress, it's a visual thing, right? We get tunnel vision. If you've ever had anxiety before, you know you get tunnel vision. Switching over to the other side, exhaling to twist. It's so hard to even look at people sometimes. Like for me, it was just like, I didn't want people to sense my pain or to notice that feeling or to pass that on to other people. Exhales to twist. And so this really gets our visual system open, right? Inhale center. And on that last one, right, where we were doing our, our uh, neck stretches, looking up, that's really good too, right? We need to get our body our mind, our whole system into different patterns. Exhale to twist. Just one more each side after this. Inhale back to center. That way our body can adapt, our brain can adapt. The anxiety is basically like we can't adapt to what we think might happen in the future to our current circumstances. And I can say this, I've had severe anxiety, sometimes caffeine related. Exhale to twist. Inhale back to center. What I'm trying to say is we need to put our bodies, our minds in different positions to get out of these little ruts, right? Exhale to twist. Inhale back to center. And this is where we'll finish our class. And I actually will do a quick Shavasana in breath base with our yoga fusion. We normally uh, bring together in a full class, fitness, yoga, qigong, with flexibility, meditation, um, strength, mindfulness, all these different things, right? To really help people with anxiety. But Shavasana, this laying down pose, if you don't do anything else in yoga, that's like the number one thing. So three-way neck stretch, Shavasana, just laying down on the ground for five minutes, balances all the different body systems, okay? 
So coming up to those toes, and if you're seated, this is fine too. If you have really tight calves, I recommend doing the opposite of what I'm doing. So you're going to raise your toes off the ground versus raising the heels off the ground. We're patting the top of the head. Inhale up. And then I want you to try and come down heavy as long as you can. If you don't have any back problems, come down heavy onto those heels. Okay, so we're coming forward here. Inhale up. Exhale down. We're going kidney energy on those toes. Vitality, fire, water. Exhale, heels, bladder. Ooh, yeah. And these both affect our whole systems, okay? You know? Sorry, YouTube, you can't see my head. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Okay. So I will do a quick guided um, shavasana here. And I'll just turn the cameras down here. And let's theoretically uh, just lay down on the ground, though. No, doesn't really matter. Um, it's very, very important that you um, are comfortable for about five minutes while we do this. So lay down on the ground. Find a comfortable spot if you choose. If not, that's fine, too. You can say bye-bye. But I highly recommend after a practice like this, it's so energetic that you just take the time to reintegrate, okay? So you are going to be laying down. I hope you have a pillow. I hope you have something comfortable, um, something warm too if you have a blanket. And we'll just go through a really quick body scan. This is from the um, Hatha Pratipika, which is one of the most um, authoritative texts on Hatha Yoga. And it was compiled around 1500. There were so many different practices going on from all these yogis, from ta tantric practices from 5,000 years ago. And this is just a systemized kind of book that teaches some of the best exercises, okay? So lay down on the ground and start by just noticing where you're at. If you started with us, which is not many people left, but if you started with us, we started out with an anxiety scale on a scale or a stress scale on a scale of one to 10. Where are you? I right, just notice if that number has come down, maybe you're still at a certain number. Okay. That's okay. Just notice that one of the biggest pieces of anxiety and stress is just noticing so that you can then do something about it. Sorry, I cut out there on one of these channels. So close the eyes and notice the center of the forehead. Okay, take a big deep breath in. Tense up a little bit and then let everything relax. Let the muscles relax. Keeping that focus on the center of the forehead. Noticing any sensations there. Calling in a white light if you so choose to. So noticing whatever you notice and calling in a white light. You could also call in a rose-colored light. This is healing in Tibetan medicine. Moving down to the throat. Noticing this area. Moving down to the right shoulder. The right elbow. the right wrist, the tip of your right thumb, the tip of your index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. Notice to see if you feel a difference between the two sides. Just take a moment to integrate and see what you're noticing. Moving back to the right wrist, back to the right elbow, shoulder, the shoulder, the throat, and again, noticing this throat center is our area of expression. 
It's where we share ourselves. It's where we share our hopes and dreams. Integrating and feeling that side of the body. Feeling the throat. Now moving down to the left shoulder. The left elbow. The wrist. The tip of the left thumb. Index finger. Middle finger. Ring finger. And pinky. Noticing what comes up. Noticing the two sides now. Any feeling, any sensation is valid here. There's no right or wrong. Now moving to the left wrist. That elbow. The shoulder. The throat. And again, resting here and asking for support from higher guides, calling in the white light or the rose colored light again, reaffirming that energetic inlet. So moving down to the heart, noticing the pulsations here. Noticing that heart throbbing and pumping, giving you life, this life force on a physical level, the blood, where a lot of our chi or our prana lives on a physical level. Thanking the heart. Thank you, heart, for doing all you do. Now, moving over to the right side, as far right as you can go, the right rib cage, really. This one sometimes takes a second to integrate. It's okay. Move back to the heart. Now move over to the left side of the chest, as far left as you can go. And it might take a second, but just know that where the mind goes, your energy will flow. So that's what we're doing here. We're trying to rebalance the nervous system to rebalance your whole body. As you lay down your back, that's happening in a passive way. <clears throat> now finishing at the heart center. This is where we, we will rest for about two minutes. So I'll just be silent here. And you can find your space to just go down deep into it. And I'll call you out in about two minutes.
right, slowly starting to come back. Now you can wiggle your fingers or your toes. Slowly coming back into the room. Taking a big deep breath in. And exhale out. Now, if you're needing a little bit more calm for your day, roll over onto that right side. That will open up your left nostril. If you need a little bit more energy for your day, excuse me, roll, roll over onto your left side and that will open the right nostril. So left side will open that right nostril. Laying on that right side will open the left, okay? And just staying there for a moment. Now, also, this is always available to you if you feel like you need to uh, kind of reset the nervous system, just do this. All you need to do, I'd say it, it would take about 15 to 20 minutes to get the system to kind of rebalance. But part of that too, just has to do with um, how the blood sits in the body. So if we lay down on our right side towards the ground, the blood is going to move towards that side. It's called perfusion. And then the left side will ventilate, okay? And then vice versa, if I lay down on my left, that blood goes down onto that left side. So we're kind of balancing out that side. And right, in Indian yoga, there's all these different chakras, and there's said to be these looping lines that kind of crisscross back and forth between them, and then they terminate here, right? So basically, it's just kind of messing with that system. Um, so come on up to a seat and we'll finish our class together. I'm so glad you guys are here. Thank you so much, Hannah, to be here, um, Hannah. And I'm just so grateful for you guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to just be with us. If you haven't followed us, we're going to be sharing a ton this month, um, all different types of things. And then we'll be releasing a new course here um, on Yoga Qigong fitness, um, emotional freedom technique, and a fusion of those two pretty soon. So stay tuned for that. So coming up, um, we'll finish our class together, uh, bringing hands to the center of the forehead. We bow to the light in each other and all the teachers that have come before us. Namaste. Thank you so much for being here. I am so grateful and again, just humbled um, to be able to do this as my passion and purpose and to be able to share this. So thank you so much. Bye-bye. Um, see if I can figure out how to shut these off now. Bye, guys.